Now, the fact is that, that wh white voters, what 50 years ago would have been called Americans, because 50 years ago this country was 90% white, uh, they went for McCain 55-45. Uh, it wasn't overwhelming, but it was a solid victory. In other words, it's not clear to me that the American people really support Obama. Uh, you know, there's a, a moment in the movie, The, the Good Shepherd, where the, where the wasp hero is a CIA agent, is asked by uh, a, a ma mafia Bob who, a boss who he's trying to recruit, you know, is the Italians of food, uh, the Jews have got family, what do you wasps have? And the, guy, and the hero replies, we have the United States of America, the rest of you are just visiting. Uh, and that's what this election shows us. I mean, the, the, uh, the, uh, the whites vote one way, everybody else votes the vote another way. And white Protestants, by the way, voted much more uh, uh, for McCain than, than, uh, than, than white Catholics did, although a majority of white Catholics did vote for McCain. Uh, you know, Obama has been very widely credited, but with the youth vote. And he did win. It's the only part of the white vote he won was, was the 18 to 30 year olds. But it wasn't a huge margin. It was about 55, 45, rather similar to McCain's overall margin among whites. It wasn't that great. If you project that back, if you take the racial breakdown of the vote this year and project it back, adjusting for the demographic shift that's been caused by immigration, you find that with the proportion of the white vote that he got, McCain would have actually won the election in 1976 when, when, uh, when Carter beat Ford. He ran better than Ford. Uh, uh, absent immigration, he would, he, would, he would now be president. Look at, looking at it the other way, and I did this calculation because Jared Taylor asked me to, uh, you know, if the GOP can just get back to the share of the white vote it had in 2004, which was about 54%, um, uh, 50, uh, 58% rather, they could certainly, uh, they can win again in, in 2012. It will be close, but they can, they can win. And the, then the GOP under Bush has n never did particularly well with the, with the, with the white vote. Uh, in 1984, back in 1984, Reagan got 65% of the white vote, which would be easily enough to win uh, an election right now, particularly considering that white turnout was very low this year compared to, uh, compared to black and other minority turnouts. You know, I think in some respects, what we should be looking at is the example of Alabama. In Alabama, or the South in general, but particularly Alabama. In Alabama, the, the, as you know, Michael, the... Uh, the white, whites are only 65% of the electorate, whereas in the U.S. at large, about 75, 77% of the electorate. So they're in much worse shape than, than American whites generally. Um, but still the GOP wins overwhelmingly because it gets 88% of the white vote in this last election. Uh, they don't do it by sending out the fire across or anything like that. It's not clear to me how they do it, and maybe Michael, who's a doorman, can explain it. it. It seems to be like an implicit thing that everybody in the South understands the way things are, they all vote Republican. Uh, I'm not sure the Republicans deserve this, but, but that's, that, that's how it works. Uh, so the, 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 my conclusion here is that for the, for the Republican Party or any party of the American majority, uh, the, the way to win is what we at vdare.com call the sailor strategy after Steve Saylor, one of our writers who's written a great deal on it. Mobilize the white base, get them to turn out, penetrate, get deeper into your base than you are now. The, the Democrats carry their base votes by factors of 70, 80, 90 percent, more than 90 percent in the case of the blacks. Uh, the, whites, the whites have been below 60 percent for many years. Uh, they, uh, if they did that, even without actually cutting off immigration, they could continue to win the national elections for quite a long time. Although, of course, uh, win, um, making immigration an issue would, would, would certainly help them. It's astonishing how hard it is to get Republican operatives to see this. Um, I mean, the case of, of Bush and Rove, uh, I've just con conclusion. I mean, the, uh, Occam's razor would indicate that they've just been bought by the Mexican oligarchs. I can't think of any other reason for the strategy that they, they follow. But, you know, I have friends in Washington, for example, some time ago I was talking to a fellow I used to know who worked for Jesse Helms. Uh, and I, I made this argument that all, the, all that uh, the Republicans have to do is not outreach but inreach. They've got to find, they've got to mobilize their white base. And he said, Peter, in this city, if you said that, you would be excluded from any further conversation. It's not possible to say that. This is a man who worked for Jesse Helms. I mean, you know, uh, the, the people are wearing equality blinders, uh, journalists and, and, and political operatives. They literally can't think about, about race, about the, the role that race plays in American, uh, in American politics and the role, therefore the role that immigration is playing. Uh, Richard mentioned a few moments ago 
uh, the danger of being shut down for hate speech. And I take that very seriously. I think the first one, the first things Obama will do is push through this hate speech law, federal hate speech law, that Teddy Cady has been trying to get through for so long. We're running a column tonight where one of our columnists, Joe Gazzardi, discussing this. And he says that the big problem we have is not hate speech, but what he calls hate facts. In other words, there are things that uh, everybody knows are true but can't be said. Uh, and and uh, the, uh, the rapid sh shift of uh, the need for the Republicans to mobilize their white base uh, is a hate fact. Uh, and and it, uh, uh, it, it can't be said, but it's apparently, but it still remains true. Uh, well, let's go back to philosophy. What's happened here, of course, is that the, the equality, this equality meme has, uh, has uh, obviously gotten out of its cage. Uh, it, it's broken loose of any connect, uh, from any connection to equality before the law, which is a kind of a, a legitimate and, and traditional uh, use of the concept of equality. Uh, and it's been wandering around the countryside killing sheep and generally terrifying people for, for thir 30 or 40 years. Uh, it was a major rationale for the 1965 Immigration Act, of course, going back that far, uh, which, of course, opened up the country to mass immigration after a long lull of 40-odd years in which there was almost no, no immigration at all. Um, and the, the rationale for the act, that act was that all countries had to be treated equally as sources for immigration to the U.S., there was no discussion at the time and no pretense that the immigration numbers were actually going to increase. In fact, people who said they were going to increase were roundly denounced in the most indignant terms. Now, I think, as a matter of fact, that the, um, the, the insiders, the people who drafted that legislation, were always lying through their teeth. They knew perfectly well that this would, uh, this would increase uh, uh, immigration in such a way as to, in fact, uh, destabilize the American ethnic balance. A little while ago, we ran on the site, and this is one of the wonderful things about the Internet, which is a gift from God to all of us, uh, particularly, particularly those of us at post-paleos. Uh, we ran a, a clip of an interview with Norbert Schley, who was the uh, Justice uh, Department operative who actually drafted the legislation. And it's one of these cases, you know, there are things that you can, you can say in print and things that you can say on film. He was discussing his role and whether he anticipated what was going to happen. And he sort of giggled in a sort of sinister way. Uh, you know, and that giggle, that sinister giggle, that smile, what, the person who put, showed me this compared to Mona Lisa's smile, ambiguous smile, what did he really think? Did he really think, he, what, did he really know what was going to happen? If you can't see that video without believing that he did know what was going to happen, he, was just, he just knew he was pulling a fast one. Um, one of the, uh, I became aware of this uh, equality uh, problem, this equality, the role this equality meme at one point, when I, when I was talking at the University of Cincinnati Law School in the, uh, some time ago, you know, polemical writers always try to anticipate arguments, you know. And one of the reasons I like speaking, and, and on, on college campuses in particular, which reminds me, Kevin, weren't you going to arrange some speaking engagements for me? Thank you. <laughs> well, is, is uh, that, you know, you can never anticipate the stupid arguments that people come up with. You just can't imagine it. Uh, I was discussing the, the act, the, the, the idea of immigration reduction, what we call patriotic immigration reform, to distinguish it from uh, President Bush's immigration reform. Uh, and this kid gets up and said that any immigration reduction would obviously discriminate against foreigners. <laughs> and therefore, it would violate American civil rights law. He thought that Americans were somehow, that foreigners were somehow covered uh, by American civil rights laws. <laughs> An Obama Supreme Court nominee, yes. You know, I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> um, now, obviously, what we're talking about here is not equality. It, it, it's an activist agenda design, designed to... Uh, uh, d d destroy the social order. It's antinomianism, it's, it's nihilism, but it's not equality. Uh, in terms of this equality means actual functioning, you know, all those right, of course, some people are more equal than others. And right now, founding stock Americans, in fact, Americans in general, uh, are, more, are the more equal than others.